In this part of the anatomy of the pelvis and the perineum, we are going to describe the blood supply of the pelvis. Lastly, we come to the blood supply of the pelvis. We we'll start by the arterial supply, and there's four arteries which can reach or will reach the female pelvis, the internal iliac, this is the main one and the largest one, the median sacral, the superior rectal, and the ovarian artery in female. The anterior iliac, as I said, is the main artery in the pelvis. The median sacral is a branch from the abdominal aorta, from the back of the aorta at the site of its bifurcation into two common iliacs. It will descend in the middle line in front of the fifth lumbar, in front of the sacrum, to end at the tip of coccyx as the glomus coccygeum, a fibromuscular body. Its branches will be mainly the fifth pair of lumbar arteries, branches to the anterior sacral foramina of the sacrum to reach the back, and branches to the rectum and the anal canal. The superior rectal is the continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery, and this artery starts at the brim of the pelvis to descend on the side of the rectum and then divide into two branches on each side of its back. And this artery is responsible for the supply of the mucosa of the rectum and the upper part of the inner canal, being the artery of the hind gut and the hind gut is the endodermal part which will develop the mucous membrane developed from it and it will end by an smoothing with the middle rectal and the inferior rectal which are not of the blood supply of the gut but they supply the muscular coat of the rectum and the anal canal and this is site of Borto systemic anastomosis when it comes to their veins. The ovarian artery is a branch of the abdominal aorta at the level of the third lumbar. It will descend in front of the psoas major to reach the suspensory ligament of the ovary, supplying the ovary uterine tube and a smoothing with the uterine artery. That is the ovarian artery. It is one of the two branches of the common iliac artery at the level of the sacroiliac joint, divided into external iliac, which will continue to become the femoral artery of the lower limb, and the inter iliac, which is a short trunk, which is then downwards and backwards along the anterior border of the greater sciatic notch to reach the Aeschylus spine, where it ends by dividing into posterior division and anterior division. The posterior division will give the ilulumbar, the two lateral sacral, and the superior gluteal arteries, which all of them are parietal branches, while the anterior division will give two sets of branches, parietal and visceral. The parietal are the inferior gluteal, the interbodendal, and the obturator arteries. These are the three parietal branches. The visceral branches are the umbilical artery, that is the artery of the fetal umbilical artery, which will give the superior vesical and terminate by forming the median umbilical ligament, which will reach the umbilicus at the end. It will give inferior vesicle in male, which corresponds to the vaginal arteries in the female, the uterine artery in female only, the middle rectal arteries. These are the visceral branches of the anterior iliac artery. 
and they go to the corresponding structures the superior vesicle to the bladder inferior vesicle will give some structure which we'll mention later the uterine artery for the uterus the mid rectal going to the muscular coat of the rectum the both the inferior gluteal and the superior gluteal will go to the gluteal region to supply the muscular parts there interpodental artery will be dealt in, in details with the perineum, it is an artery which supply mainly the genital organs. The obturator will go to the lower limb, supplying part of the lower limb. And these are the branches of the internal iliac. That is the summary. Where the from the posterior division, as we said. The iliolumbar, the lateral sacral, the superior gluteal. From the anterior division, the obturator, the interpodendal, and the inferior gluteal. The visceral branches are the umbilical, which will give the superior vesicle and then terminate as a fibrous band up to the umbilicus, forming the medial umbilical ligament on each side of the middle line then the middle rectal the artery to the rectum which supply the muscular coat as we said the inferior cycle in the male which correspond to the vaginal artery in the female in the male it will supply the ureter the trigone of the bladder the seminal vesicle the ejaculatory reduct and the vast difference. Those five structures are derivatives of the mesonephric duct in the male. In the female, it will supply the vagina, the uterus, and the ureter. Then, lastly, the very important artery in the female pelvis, the uterine artery in the female. And this, we have to know the details of that artery. That is the uterine artery here in a good diagram, <coughs> showing the close relation to the ureter. It arises from the interiliac lateral to the ureter. Then it will cross the ureter and tear to it but the main important point as you can see in that diagram here it lies anterior to the ureter for almost one inch two and a half centimeters very close to the upper surface of or the front of the ureter and that's where accidental ligation of the ureter can occur during hysterectomy to both the artery and the ureter. Then it will cross to the medial side to gain the medial side of the ureter, of the ureter, then ascend along the side of the uterus within the broad ligament and it will supply the uterus at that side. Then at the junction between the uterine tube and the uterus, it will turn laterally along the uterine tube to end by anastomosing with the ovarian artery. That is the very important relation of the uterine artery with the ureter. That's a good cadaveric specimen showing most of the branches of the internal iliac artery. That is the external iliac artery and that is the internal iliac artery. These are two large lymph nodes along the site of the internal iliac and the external iliac, one of the groups of the lymph nodes of the pelvis. Even you can see a branch coming from the external iliac to supply these lymph nodes here. The branches of the internal iliac, this is 
one of the most common arteries in the body which have a lot of variations to the extent that you cannot find one artery like the other in different bodies so it is very common variations occur in the branching of this artery what you can see here that is the median medial umbilical ligament the fibrosed umbilical artery the fetal umbilical artery which fibrosed after birth giving the superior vesicle here this is the bundle of the obturator nerve vein and artery coming out from the obturator canal over here that is the vaginal artery which may be one or two branches here that is the uterine artery in relation with the ureter here lying in front of it this is the middle rectal artery that is the inferior gluteal and this is the superior gluteal artery these are the lateral sacral arteries that's a good specimen here academic one the veins within the pelvis draining the organs has a very special character this venous drainage starts by plexuses around the different organs as the rectum have its rectal plexus the uterus uterine plexus vaginal plexus vesical plexus ovarian plexuses and all these plexuses <clears throat> starts from the organs and end by veins which join the arteries to end up in the internal iliac vein to the common iliac to the inferior vena cava within the uh, rectum the upper part is drained by the superior rectal which will end up in the portal vein so this is a portal blood within the superior rectal while the rest is caval blood so within the rectum in the upper part of the inner canal there would be a portal caval and a smosis the important thing here that all these venous plexuses are freely communicating with each other together the communication with the internal vertebral plexus of veins which is found in the spinal canal occupying that spinal canal up to the foramen magnum and along its course from the pelvis up to the base of the skull that internal vertebral plexus communicates also with the different plexuses in the different parts of the trunk as it goes up especially with the posterior intercostal veins with the lumbar veins and the veins of the neck as we'll see next slide this character will allow the infectious materials to be connected with those of the internal vertebral plexus through which it can disseminate to the less to the to the other parts of the body and more important the cancer cells can traverse the same route to metastasize in different parts of the trunk that is the special character of the venous plexuses and venous drainage within the pelvis here this is some of the phenomena of this pelvic venous plexuses or characters summarized by the uh, coming points the various pelvic organs as we said drained by venous plexuses the veins draining those venous plexuses drain into the interiliac along the uh, branches uh, with the, uh, the same names of the arteries supplying the organs except those of the gonadal veins which is the ovarian in this case and the testicular in the male 
which will end in the inferior vena cava directly. The uterine, the vaginal, the vesicle, the prostatic, the rectal, the pudendal veins form tributaries to the internal leg vein. The above plexuses, as we said, communicates freely with the internal vertebral venous plexuses, and both plexuses are valveless, and that's where the danger is free communication or free passage of the infectious materials and the cancer cells. Embuli from the disease of the pelvic viscera can thus, as we said, find their way by reflux blood flow into the vertebrae and other parts of the body. Primary tuber, tumors and pelvic viscera can thus be synthesized to the vertebrae and to the ribs and other parts. Also, sudden increase of the intra-abdominal pressure when coughing or any other reason may drive blood backward up in the intervertebral plexus into the posterior intercostal veins and by the azygous vein into the superior vena cava by passing the diaphragm. The portal hypertension, because of that portostomic anastomosis or connection, will result in hepatic as a result of hepatic cirrhosis. Portocaval anastomosis in the pelvis may become or read or form what to call it varicose veins. The pelvic venous plexus is a venous plexus is a complex set of interconnected blood vessels. That's what the plexus is. And these are in the pelvis the rectal venous plexus, the vesicle, the prostatic, the ovarian venous plexus, which we call it bambiniform plexus, vaginal and uterine venous plexus. This is the group of plexuses within the pelvis.